four this year. He was reinstated from the disabled list on July 24th with left biceps tendonitis. And in the last three games, Rex, 3.57 ERA. He's throwing the ball free and easy. That's the main thing. Got a nice windup, arms coming up over his head. He feels good. His three pitches are, are as good as they were before he sat out and has been out with his injury. But Duffy's fastball has been good. He's going to get that ball up to about 96 at times. He's more comfortable in the low 90s with that. But he has that power four seamer that he can get by hitters. Royals defense brought to you by Ford. Moose finally in. All of the voting, folks, is over. You guys did a wonderful job. And not only did you show your support, but these guys are worthy. They're trying to win the game. It's not like these, they're not all star caliber and have all star numbers. They've got them. Great to see it. Seventh Royal to be selected to the 2015 All-Star Game. Catcher Salvador Perez will be heading to Cincinnati. Alex Gordon, of course, will not play because of the injury. Lorenzo Cain will start in right field. And, of course, Alcides Escobar will be the starting shortstop. And the Royals also will send two outstanding relievers, Kelvin Herrera and Wade Davis. Boy, Lorenzo Cain, he has proven his worth of late, hitting 517 the last eight games. And he scored the game winning runs in the first two victories on this homestand against Minnesota on Friday and Sunday's walk offs. Here is Jose Reyes, batting 270, speed guy. First pitch is at 917. So we experienced about a two hour and seven minute rain delay. Duffy gets this strike across and Danny of course and I know you've talked about this HUD, going with that full wind up where he takes his arms hands over his head did not do that earlier this year and in years past. Ground ball short Escobar has it. And there's one out. Yep, that overhand motion he got from Wade Davis, his locker mate, on the road in Seattle when he when he was getting ready to make his comeback, and he said he liked it because he felt felt like he had rhythmic ease. And when he dropped that term rhythmic ease on me, I, I had to get my notepad out, Biz, and write it down and say, "Wow, that sounds." Like a big word. Here's Moose. Back from Southern California. Right on the money. Two out. He likes the rhythm. He likes the fluidity of this motion and the windup. So over the head. Nice. And he looks down. Picks up his target. And comes right over the top. That's what he wants. And to get Donaldson out. On one pitch was a beautiful thing. Great to see Moose back. And how about his beloved fans? They are pumped to have him back. Yeah, it was great to see while he was gone so many signs at Kauffman Stadium wishing him well or doing the hashtag vote Moose. And obviously, Kansas City responded. He had over 19 million votes to get him to Cincinnati. And he thanked everybody before the ball game. Uh, one of the things that he was able to do when he was out with his family was he was able to watch the Royals games on TV and he heard all the love. He watched all the plays. He saw all the signs. It really made him and his family feel oh. wonderful. Strike across from Danny Duffy count goes to two and one. And I asked him today how does it feel Moose to be loved on like you have been. The whole country is talking about you and voting you in. He says it's overwhelming to, to, to feel all of that energy. Pretty special you can experience that in your lifetime, especially small lifetime as a baseball player. Batista fouls it off. The count is full three and two. 
Chris, you talked a lot about their power, and, and, and against lefties this year, they're hitting 296. That's the best mark in Major League Baseball against lefties. 26 homers, and they are 12 and 9 is their record against lefties. This is a bigger ballpark, more acreage here at Kauffman Stadium than they have in Toronto, and also on a night that's not too hot, ball may not count. Travel as far as Batista takes it inside ball four and he continues his success on base percentage. That's his 66th walk this year and that's the most in the American League. Well they average 5.34 runs per game. That's number one. They have the most doubles. They have the highest slugging percentage. But they're only second in home runs with 113. Yeah, but something tells me that the Royals could care less. And they are not the least intimidated by the heavy bats of the Blue Jays. Edwin Encarnacion, another power hitter. He's batting 239 with 17 home runs and 51 driven in. Batista not much of a threat to go. And Danny quick home and gets it across against Encarnacion for a 1 1 count. Ed went 0 for 2 against Duffy in his career. Another power guy. Has power straight away center field and all of left field. Occasionally he'll go deep to the opposite field but mainly pull power. Check swing on a ball low 2 and 1. Royals playing Encarnacion to pull Omar Infante their second baseman almost directly behind second base. In there two and two and I don't think Encarnacion agreed with Adrian Johnson the home plate umpire. Inside corner. Now Batista will be going. Edwin has always had success against Kansas City last year hit four home runs and in his career hitting 337. Be surprised if he threw anything other than the fastball challenge him here get the ball home quickly. There you go. Lots of times you foul a ball off, you just can't help it. The fragrance, they could bottle it up and sell it, Fizz, and call it bat odor. I don't know what they would call it. <laughs> you got to think about that. Yeah, There's yeah. a drive to center field, and that is deep. And Kane is there. We told you it's not a hot evening. The ball is not going to carry as well, and Kane had it measured up. And Danny can breathe a sigh of relief.
There, the Royals in first place at 50 and 33. Minnesota was losing big to Detroit last time we checked as Urban Santana gave up three home runs to the Tigers. And here's a look at the Royal lineup. They'll lead things off with all-star Escobar, all-star Moustakis, all-star Kane, and then go Hosmer, Morales, Perez on all-star, Infante Rios, and Dyson. And don't forget now for Hosmer, he wears the gold, so you could you could use gold for him. Yep. There's all kinds of talent, including this young man right here, Marco Estrada. Last two years, he was a starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, now with Toronto. His last seven starts have gone very well, five and one record. And Escobar goes after the first pitch, drives it in the alley right center, but back goes Batista to pull it down for out number one. Well, this could be a very interesting matchup for Marco Estrada as you hear the crowd. All for Moose Dacus. And they did indeed vote Moose as he was selected today to head to Cincinnati. Estrada's first pitch to him is swung on and lifted foul that will find the seats for strike one. One of the reasons it's going to be interesting is that this is the perfect offense that Marco Estrada likes to pitch to. He wants aggressive hitters up there. He's not overpowering although he'll he will throw 93 but he's better low 90s two seam four seam curveball change up. He's a guy who who really is has some deception in his delivery but he likes to nibble on the corners and pitch backwards and what that means is that throw off speed pitches in fastball counts. So he's a he feeds off of the hitters aggression. Oh. Rex's changeup is his second best pitch and opponents only batting 195 off of it. It's a beauty. And he does a great job of hiding it. So two balls and two strikes to Mike Moustakis with one out. And then he chases that off speed pitch down and away and that's out number two and how about the Blue Jays defense. Defensively Blue Jays uh, Reyes the shortstop maybe not having the quite a, the range that he used to have the kid Travis the second base is good but Bautista he's an all star got a good arm likes to play. Toronto will defend Lorenzo Kane to pull. My goodness, has he been hot? And he smacks one sharply to the third baseman, Donaldson, who knocks it down, picks it up, doesn't have time, and then throws it away. But Kane will stay put at first base. It'll be a base hit for Lorenzo. He hit it sharply, and Josh was able to knock it down, keep it in front of him. But Kane runs so well, he gets the infield hit. Yep, Lorenzo Kane looking for. A cookie out over the middle of the plate. And it didn't matter as the first pitch. He hit it hard. And third baseman, you know, all you can do is react. Donaldson, a fantastic athlete and a very good third baseman. Kevin Cash, the manager of the Tampa Bay Rays, he was talking about the Royals and he just said, yeah, they don't walk much, they don't strike out much, but all they do is attack. They are just relentless from inning one to inning nine after five pitches yesterday the Royals had a three nothing lead Nathan Carnes took note of that Hosmer two for four yesterday including a double breaking ball in there one ball one strike only two Royals players in Ned's lineup have faced this young man before Marco Estrada and both of them Omar Infante and Rios 0 for 6 combined this kid's good he's got good stuff although it's not velocity stuff it's change up stuff ouch that hurt well, we've seen Hosmer do that a lot 
It's because off his front leg. Because they're pitching him in all year long. They are pitching him in. And some there are some times that if the pitch will be too far in, and then he hit that off his quadricep, his left quad. That, ball, that tells me that ball is way inside and up to hit to foul it off your quadricep. So you know they pitch him in, and sometimes he tries to turn and burn on him inside. Kane with 17 stolen bases hasn't gone yet. And there's a fastball up two and two. Marco threw a lot of pitches in his last start and only went five innings through 101 pitches. The Tigers, I understand, fouled off a lot. We're very patient with him. And now. Hosmer has a 3 2 count. This will allow Kane to go, so if Hosmer can gap one, he can score Lorenzo from first base. Or send it down the line like he got that double yesterday. Might as well just hit it out. He hits it off the pitcher. Hosmer is going to be safe, and the Royals have two on. With two out, and they're one of the best two out hitting teams in the league. And Estrada limping back to the mound, and here comes Gibbon with his training staff. Yeah, that is not good, Fizz. And Gibbons, I, I guarantee you, the manager, John Gibbons, his heart is pounding hard right now. He He's going, oh my gosh. First inning, hit it off our guy's leg, and I got to deplete my bullpen here before the All Star break? Remember, we saw. Alcides Escobar the other day lined two off of the same pitcher Chris Archer and you had a chance to talk to Archer the next day about that and he just basically praised Esky yeah, and then he said it was my fault. I'm the one who executed the pitch. Escobar wasn't trying to hit me. <laughs> you know but but still look, look at this. Well they're, they're going to move that bullpen again. Whatever you get hit that squarely and that ball rolls slowly back to the opponent's dugout. You got hit squarely. I mean solid. And it hurt. And for him to limp like that, not even make the play, you know that there's some problems there. And John Gibbons' stomach is starting to curdle on him. And, and you know what happens here, HUD? If you are pitching with pain, all of a sudden the rest of your body takes over to not feel that pain, and it may affect the, the way you land. Oh yeah, no, another injury crops up. Yep. Yeah, you you favor that, and next thing you know, you're you're in more trouble. So this hit right off of his shin. Call this a shin burger. Now, now he's lucky that the ball only came off of the bat at 88. We've seen Hosmer's exit speed from his bat over 100 many times. So he's going to take his time and see if he can get the feeling back in there. And the way he's looking, he didn't even want to throw. I don't know. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully he can. Keep himself going because that's a tough way. 13 pitches into his start. Well, he is a tough competitor. I heard about his pitching at Long Beach State when he was there and Southern California, and that's a, a school that Jason Vargas also went to with the Royals. And boy, they produced so many good major leaguers and so many really talented major league pitchers. Vargas won, of course, and Jared Weaver of the Los Angeles Angels and some pretty good position players like Troy Tulowitzki. Well, they're talking about it. He obviously he's thrown enough pitches to know whether he can stay in or not. Now he's trying another another pitch or two. I don't know. I can tell you, John Gibbons is not thrilled about leaving him in there. Not at all. Oof. They do have a right-hander warming up. In the Toronto bullpen, just in case. And what's the strategy of Kendris Morales? Because he's watching in the on deck circle, Estrada throw look, those practice pitches. Okay, look first pitch cookie, and if it's a ball, then go into take mode. Start taking. Are you looking dead red? I'm looking dead red first pitch with the runner in scoring position, just like Lorenzo Kane did. But if he if he's not around the strike zone, you know, you, you know, see if he can get into some commands, have some command issues.
Morales with a fly ball to center field. Kevin Pilar is there. He'll make the catch. So Estrada gets out of further trouble, but limps off the field after getting struck in the shin by Eric Hosmer. strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile that family was holding up a sign for Salvador Perez the young lady wanted Salvi to be her catcher she could warm up for a South Call you? game and have uh, Salvador Perez catch for and her. he would love oh, to he would. and you know what it would just make her life if she could throw a pitch to Salvi how about that I've seen ball players during batting practice Danny Valencia first pitch Escobar throws him out. I've seen players in the outfield during batting practice play catch with fans in the seats. Mm -hmm. You know during VP. I mean that's that's a, a common practice for some guys and gives kids a thrill. I think I saw you do that back in 96. Sure man I'm going to tell you what it's all about the fans. It's all about these people who not only pay our salary but stir the economy in ba Major League Baseball. How about steer the economy for the Royals 19 million fans voted for Mike Moustakis to make him the seventh Royal to go to the All Star game. Yeah, but I'm going to guarantee you that not all those votes came from this You're area. Right. It's, you know this team is more popular than just Kansas City. Well that's why when we have that caravan in January we go to Nebraska and Iowa and Arkansas and Oklahoma. Of course, Kansas and Missouri. Yeah, that's a blast. I can't wait to do that again. Although we do have some exciting moments left in this baseball season before we get to that. Right now, the team in first place by five and a half games. Detroit leading their game six nothing over Minnesota in the eighth inning. That was a good start for Justin Verlander tonight for Detroit. He needed one. He got offensive help. They had home runs by. Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, Yoenis Cespedes. And there is ball four to Russell Martin. Second walk by Danny. Danny put on some weight in the offseason and it was all strength. He added 15 pounds and he's up to 210 pounds and he really felt it would help his durability plus he wanted to get more of his body behind the ball so he didn't fly open so much. He came into this game with just 56 innings because of the left biceps tendonitis. Deonor Navarro is the batter. Strike one.
three of the four outs that Danny's recorded have been ground ball outs, and he'd love to get one right here and get two outs on one pitch. Are you calling for a lane ball, Fizz? Why not? Why believe it? Roll it up. Navarro, it would be his first of the year. Martin, he he is a, an athletic catcher. He's got four steals. He's been caught three times. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Look at that. Toronto is a lane ball candidate. It really is a joy to watch Escobar and Infante work that middle. Of course, Mustak is so outstanding at third, delivering strike perfectly to Infante to turn from third base. Duffy has induced eight ground ball double plays this season. Line to right field. Rios has to play out on a hop. Martin will round second base, but hold there. Two on with only one out here in the second inning. No double play there. Navarro got a pitch up, was able to fight it off. Four seam fastball. Up and away, hit it exactly where it should have been hit. Good head position, kept the ball, or kept his hands inside the baseball. A little bit surprised that Martin didn't go to third on that. Martin, he runs very well. And the ball was not hit exactly at Rios, giving them an opportunity to be in scoring position. You know, he can see it. And, and there's no way that Rios going going to the wall like that would be able to throw him out there. But, hey, look. He knows himself better than I do. Here is Kevin Pilar, and he gets a high strike. In this situation Danny would prefer to get those pitches down and you can see where Sal was locating his target down just below the knees. Pilar has been one of their guys who lately has stayed hot over his last 38 games he's batting 360 he had a slow start this year but. The recent six week stretch is up that average to 279. Another energetic ball player. Ground ball short. Escobar drops it, gets it a second. They'll only get the one. And quite frankly, that's all they could get with Pilar's speed. Keep in mind the ball. Is wet and slick. Now I'm not making an excuse for Escobar. I'm just telling you the conditions of the field. It's wet. Infield, even though the tarps on it, it's wet. The grass is. Outfield, it's really wet. So it will affect how a guy catches the ball and throws it. Donaldson, that errant throw he made earlier to try to make a recovery stab on Kane, threw a slick ball. Now we'll see number nine batter Devin Travis. Who had a brilliant start in April, then faded for a couple of months, but his last 11 games batting over 400. Ground ball short, Escobar to second. That will do it. Good job by Duffy. Two shutout frames. We head to the bottom of the second inning here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, still looking for our first run.
bring the kids out of the K this Sunday for Kids Fest presented by Subway and they have all kinds of activities in the first 5,000 kids 14 and under will receive a limited edition slugger magnet set courtesy of Skippy for tickets call 1-800-6-ROYALS or go to royals.com slash kids fest. Here is Salvador Perez. Three hits in the Rays series including a home run. Strike one. Now when a guy takes a smash off of his leg and obviously is limping what will the trainer do when he comes back to the dugout in that half inning. He'll say man were you tough hanging in there. <laughs> you you finish it. So no okay. ice. That's his right foot. No they're not going to ice it because it gets stiff and then it gets sore. You want to keep it loose. Don't put anything on it. Except an aspirin. There's a base hit by Salvador with two strikes on him. He now has a six game hit streak. There's another term that players use and they say tape an aspirin on it. Does that work. No. Now if you if you you know take a couple extra string Tylenol I mean you know that that's going to help but, but I'm talking but, taping it on there. No 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 just taping no taping <laughs> it literally on the skin does not work. That's why it's a little tongue in cheek uh, tape and aspirin on it. I'm fine. Now Omar Infante. Oh and he sends it down the right field line just foul. Oh, I liked his approach on the first pitch there. And you know really to hit a guy like Estrada who's not overpowering and likes to get guys to swing out of the strike zone you must think opposite field on him or he'll beat you every time with that good changeup he's got you'll you'll spin yourself into a, a dirt pile at home if you try to pull that pitch you got to just try to focus on on staying within yourself and, and hitting that ball to the other side and then you'll react in naturally. So he comes up and in on Omar. Infante ended in 0 for 10 with a base hit in the eighth inning last night. So his batting average at 2 3 2. Back to back, fastballs inside. Delivery's a little funky. He starts wide open, looking right at you with his left foot as open as it can be. Here's Estrada, and then he has a little slide step. He brings up his knee slowly. Only play is first base. Perez moves into scoring position at second on the slow roller that Donaldson throws out Omar. almost as good as a bunt. Got him in scoring position. And here's a guy who the Royals would really like to see pick it up. He had two hits yesterday in the Royals eight to three win a solid single to left field and also a line single to center field. He had some great years with the Toronto Blue Jays. That was the organization he grew up with. And Alex takes low and then of course traded to the Chicago White Sox or basically released and grabbed by the Chicago White Sox but they had to take all of his contract from Toronto. That ball struck well in the gap left center field that will score Perez easily. And Rios has himself a ringing double. Great to see some thunder out of the baseball bat of Rios, man. Nice stroke. He popped that ball. 
Salvador knew it. He took off. He watched it for a minute just to make sure Pilar couldn't get to it. Because that guy, Pilar, man, he gets to a lot of balls. He's very good center fielder. But not this time. Perfect swing. Nice to see that. Rios, they need some more of that production from him. And would like to see it. And he'd like to see it himself. First extra base hit since June 15th. Almost one month, only his fourth double of the year. And remember, he had 40 doubles last year, excuse me, 30 doubles last year for the Texas Rangers. But he's always been a good doubles guy, 43 with Toronto in 2007, 47 in 2008. Granted, that's a while back, but still the Royals believe in his success. And Ned Yosh has been very patient with Alex. Believing that he needed this time to get back in the swing of things and now Dyson swings and tried to check his swing and the third base umpire Jim Wolf said he went and it looked like he did. So the Royals cashed in. For the first time with a runner in scoring position tonight. After they left a guy in the first inning so it's their second guy and Rios knocked him in 33 runs. In the four game series by the Rays. 349 average with runners in scoring position. 15 for 43. That's what you need. I mean, obviously, not at that type of clip. You don't need to score that many runs, but they sure were hot on those four, four games. Yeah, it's the first time since 2011 that the Royals have scored seven or more runs in four straight games. Dyson defensively has been outstanding the last two nights. And uh, relief of the injured Alex Gordon. Tried to jam him inside. The count moves even. Two balls, two strikes. Dale Swain's offense fizz would like to compete with this kid Estrada. Make him make some pitches. Make him execute. Let him expend a few of those pitches. Compete with him. Wait for your pitch. Wait him out. That will go back to the screen. Rios will take third base and with one out. If Dyson can keep that ball on the ground or fire it deep enough. Well, Kansas City could have a two nothing lead. That hit the plate and it looked like it was going to come up. But as soon as it hit the plate, it stayed down went right between the legs of Navarro. And you can vote for the Royals player of the month at rallyhouse.com and you will be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. And for Gerard Dyson, you don't always take a look at only his offensive numbers. And boy, they have been good since the end of May. Hitting 360s last 10, you go back even further, and he's been hitting 429 since May 25th. But Royal fans have come to know and love his defense. I mean, the last two games, he has had double plays that have helped out dramatically. Help your Donna Ventura get out of uh, trouble in the first inning yesterday against the Rays and then after Gordon was injured got Guthrie out of a bases loaded nobody out jam with that terrific double play and a catch and throw home. Oh a swing and a miss by Dice and two out. OK I mentioned earlier that he likes to pitch backwards. And if you've heard that phrase once and you don't know what that is, that means that three and two is a fastball count. Hitters look at fastball. There's a changeup. So in fastball counts, you get secondary off speed pitches. That's called pitching backwards. And he got Dyson on it. But you know, Fizz, getting back to Dyson's plays, those two plays, sure they were nice and special, those were game changing plays that altered the momentum and absolutely changed the game for the good of the Royals. Escobar fouls it off. 
Eski with a seven game hit streak. He swung at the first pitch he saw from Estrada in the first inning, flied out to right. But 13 hits over his last 30 at bats during this streak. Escobar is the kind of hitter that, that will wait and try to hit the ball to the opposite field. There's a butt. Donaldson in. Bare hands. And gets Eski at first base. Well, Josh heading to the All-Star game not only for his offense but his defense. But still Alex Rios gapped one left center field and drives in RBI at number 13 this year. Nice swing. Goldberg back at Kauffman Stadium. Everyone saying feel better, Alex. And Alex Gordon is back in the dugout. He wasn't in there yesterday. And yesterday, guys, he was on crutches. Had a chance to spend a little bit of time with him in the clubhouse today. And he walked from one spot to the other. I said, where are the crutches? He said, I'm, I'm done with them. I got rid of those already. Slight limp, he said. The pain is a little bit more severe today, he said. But that's because... He doesn't want to take the pain medicine anymore. He was taking that yesterday. He's off of that. He said he doesn't like it. He's in great spirits. And he said that the next few days, some ice and rest. And then after that, it'll be introducing laser treatment. And then they'll start to work on strengthening things. But I was really impressed with how upbeat he was. He looked good. He sounded like himself. And very happy to be back there with his teammates. He said the only thing he's got to be careful about at home is his two boys. He said, Max... His older son, he gets it. He knows he can't jump on dad anymore, but they, they say they really got to look out for the younger one, Sam, because he doesn't quite get it. So they're keeping an eye out to make sure that their younger son doesn't do any further damage. You know, you got those boys running around the house and can uh, can get after dad a little bit. But, Al, it's great to see him back in the dugout. Sure is. It was a great story about Max running into the wall at home and say, guess who I am? I'm Alex Gordon. And then he would crash into the wall and lay down for a little while and then get up after making a great catch. <laughs> We're in the top of the third inning, and there's a ground ball down the line past Mike Moustakas. Dyson gets to it quickly, and here's the throw to second base, and look at this! Oh, my! He just continues to show off that arm. He's got a case of Gordonitis. You better believe he does. He, he attacked that baseball. He was on it in a flash. It turns up and, and throws a howitzer cannon right to Infante. Got, got Reyes by, by 10 feet. Fourth outfield assist by Dyson. Watch this. Reyes, he runs well. He hits the bag and he's coming up and he, he's going to be out by 10 feet. What a throw. Gerard Dyson is putting on a clinic. 
Yeah I wonder if he thought well Gordon's not out there so I have a chance and then Dyson throws one right on the money. Well I got news for you Gerard Dyson. He's here and he and he wants to continue to play and he's not going anywhere. He has four assists and three are in the last three games. He is hot. Duffy. Thank you Danny. Yeah that helped him big time. Duffy fell behind three and zero, oh and appreciated the work. And you know you and I talked about this yesterday Rex. I loved what Gerard had to say after the Alex injury when he talked with Joe Goldberg after the ball game. Everything was about team. We you know Alex is one of my best friends and I want to see him healthy. I want him out there. I, I think he's a great player. But we as a team have to get through this and I thought Gerard showed great leadership and his energy is is contagious on this team. Well Dyson was different in spring training I could tell he was matured. He, he matured two years in one just like the rest of his guys after climbing the mountain last year. Line drive to Escobar. Well it's one night a year and it's the all star game Escobar will be there for the first time and don't miss the 86th all star game coverage begins at six o'clock central next Tuesday July 14th on Fox seven Royals will be there and of course Mike Moustakas was voted in today but Alcides Escobar one of the best shortstops in the game will be making his first start and it was a game he said he thinks about every single day and now when they announce the starting lineups they will say the shortstop from the Kansas City Royals Alcides Escobar and that's a, a great moment. Swing and a miss. A matter of fact it was on this day in Royals history where we hosted the All Star game back in 2012. Breaking ball fouled off one and two. The National League would shut out the American League that night here at the K eight nothing. Giants pitcher Matt Kane got the start and the victory for the Nationals. Another line drive this one just by Escobar into left field. So second time that Batista has been on first with a walk now with a single. Change up. Hits it off the end of the bat. But he stayed with he stayed with it. Couldn't barrel it. And Carnacion pops it up. Foul territory. Hosmer should have it. He does. And the Royals will take their one nothing lead to the bottom of the third. But Dyson's defense bails out Duffy. Gerard with some love from Gordon.
won a flashback in our Mazda game break to July 22nd of last year for a couple of reasons. One, Mike Moustakis at the White Sox had not one, but two home runs. And since that day, including that day, the Royals, and in the postseason, are 102 and 60. That was that magical day, not just for Moose, but the struggling Royals got that big speech before the game after having lost four in a row and they were struggling. That was the speech from Raul Abanez and the veterans, and they have not looked back since. And of course, this year, Mike Moustakis, the All Star, has been incredible. Mike, right now with a batting average at an even 300. And I remember some of the players articulating the thoughts of Ibanez that day. And Raul came over from the Angels and just reminded them that, do you know what other teams say about you? They say you're dangerous, you're aggressive, you're relentless. You need to think that. Other teams are worried about the way you attack and play offensively and challenge defenses all the time. And all of a sudden, the Royals started playing with a reckless abandon. And they developed a winning swagger. And boy, has it continued because we talked about we don't even think the team has hit their, their stride yet. And that yet they find ways to win. Minnesota thought they outplayed Kansas City in that last weekend series. And Minnesota left with a split because the Royals had two walk offs one on Friday Dyson's ground ball and the other on Sunday on Hosmer's game winner scoring Lorenzo Cain from first the Royals know the formula for winning. They, they know how to win they know what it takes so they're winning those games that the, the Royals used to not win. And if the opponent makes a mistake, they jump on it. They'll try it again at two balls and two strikes. And Estrada has been very effective against left handed batters this year because of that change up. But he's only batting 224 this year. Left field playable for Danny Valencia who's normally a third baseman but he makes the catch for out number one. He's been really tough on right handers at a 205 average but has given up a total of 10 home runs five to lefties five to righties. Just the start of the second time through. For the Royals, they'll, they'll figure him out. It's the changeup, though, that they're going to have to start looking for, especially with two strikes. And to start the the at bat right there, 79. And you can actually go up there when you when you know a guy that throws the, the, the changeup as often as he does, and you can look for that pitch. You, and you you take the fastball and you take the curve. When you just sit there and you wait for the changeup. And sometimes you could get it. And when I mean get it, I mean hit it over the fence. Foul back one and two. But I'm looking back in my scorebook and I see where Lorenzo Kane about three weeks ago was batting 280. Since that time, he's batting over 400 and has the batting average up to 314. Swick quickly things can change. That's right. He was he was the hottest Royal in Houston. Center field. Kevin Pilar and they're two out now. Don't miss the fourth round of T-shirt Tuesday on July 21st when the Pittsburgh Pirates come to the K. The first 10,000 fans will receive this modern style charcoal gray tea courtesy of Papa John's. Now gates are scheduled to open at 530. Get your tickets now at Royals.com slash T-shirt Tuesday or by calling 1-800-6-Royals. 
Hosmer with a rip to right. His second hit. And that time Estrada pitching him inside to make sure he didn't hit it back up the middle. Yeah. Don't want to see that again. I, I'm pretty happy to see that Estrada continuing to pitch and I know John Gibbons is for sure. Good swings able to control it with that good foot that big foot right there. Oz with back to back two hit games. Morales flied out to center with runners on in the first. Ball one. KC right now enjoying their third streak of five wins or more. They had seven straight to open the season. One ball, one strike. Change up, it's a beauty. Throws that pitch and takes a, a lot off of it. 78 to 80 miles an hour. Morales with a high drive to right. No playable for Batista. He makes the catch. The Royals do not score in the third and take a 1 0 lead to the fourth here at the K. As the Royals and Justins have teamed up to provide the only officially licensed American League Championship fan collection. Relive the history making 8 no postseason sweep to the pennant. The American League Champion fan rings, necklaces, cufflinks, key rings, and more. As the storyteller of champions, Justins has crafted the championship rings of more leagues than any other company. So get your piece of the postseason today at Royals.com slash fan rings and go Royals. Danny Duffy working the fourth inning and he will face Danny Valencia who was his teammate last year and Valencia hit 282 with Kansas City and a couple of home runs before they traded him to Toronto to get a catcher in Eric Kratz and a pitcher in Liam Hendricks who's now back with the Jays in their bullpen throwing a lot harder. Danny always good against lefties. Yes, but you know, Danny wants to get ahead of hitters. So far in this game, he hasn't. He's fallen behind guys. He's been averaging about 15 pitches per inning. He was at 45 entering the fourth. 
Valencia takes his strike. It's three and one. Danny, a career 325 hitter against lefties. And he was the guy who was given that everyday opportunity when Mike Moustakas was struggling so badly in late May that they sent Mike down to AAA to work on his game. And Valencia was inserted into the lineup. But I believe it was the second game he played in in Anaheim. He broke a bone in his hand and was placed in the disabled list and Moose came right back up after spending just like eight games in the minor leagues and Valencia takes ball four and he works a leadoff walk the third issued by Duffy tonight. I remember when Valencia got hurt like the day after. Two days after Moose got and sent down, and I think it, I think Danny had the the key hit in the yeah. Royal victory over the Angels. Yeah, and, and it was really painful for Valencia to go down at that particular time. That was his chance. Mm -hmm. Russell Martin, the batter. Oh. Russell with Pittsburgh last year hit 290 with 11 home runs and already has 12 this year. Go with his 39 runs driven in. Very offensive catcher. Good power. Good idea about it. What he can do with the bat. Valencia he's. Stolen two bases been caught once. Rex, there are always teams looking for Russell Martins. I mean, he had success with the Dodgers, then with the Yankees, then with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and there was other teams who wanted to get him, attract them, and every team he went to had success. And now the Blue Jays searching for a veteran catcher. Selected Russell Martin, a guy from Ontario. Yep, he's pretty happy with. The opportunity to go back to his home country. He's grounded into nine double plays this year. And Duffy would like to get one here. Sliders, change ups, off speed pitches usually get the job done. And he has been going through a rugged time lately, but Danny can't find the strike zone. Martin is just four for his last 42. Dave Island Royals pitching coach. He always talks about that line. That direct path from Duffy's lead foot to the home plate. Three and two. And he likes to talk about trusting your stuff. Wants the pitchers to go out there and not think just go out there and pitch. You think in the other four days that you don't pitch. You think you work on some things. Continue to exercise, continue to throw, so you keep the stamina in your arm and your body. You got to keep it up. Again, coming in on the hands of Russell Martin at 93 miles an hour. In that start against the Minnesota Twins last Sunday, he allowed one run in the second inning. And also a solo home run in the third by Aaron Hicks when he fell behind in the count and fed him a fastball and it was knocked out to left field. Good battle after he was down three and one. He stayed with that fastball. And Martin continues to foul it off. The eighth pitch coming. Royals lead it one nothing on a single by Salvador Perez a ground out that advanced Salvi to second base then the double by Alex Rios. Four straight fastballs.
Base hit left field. So on the fifth straight fastball to Russell Martin, it is smacked to left field. And Toronto with two on, nobody out, and Navarro the batter. He singled the right field last time up. You throw that many fastballs to a hitter, he'll catch it every once in a while. And he just found a hole. If he could direct that at one of the players there, Moose or Escobar, he gets a double play out of it. The Royals have both corners in middle back looking for the double play. But Moustakis and Hosmer both just in case anticipating a bunt from Deanna Navarro. Well as little as the Blue Jays offense has been scoring I'd be surprised if he didn't bunt him. And he has not sacrificed this year. Well, maybe he won't then. As a team they have 19 sacrifices. But a lot of by guys who aren't in the lineup tonight. Guys like Carrera and Goins. Can't Danny getting ready to deliver his 17th pitch of the inning. Barely misses inside one and one. He's uh, getting a little frustrated, but it's a borderline pitch. He knows he's expending a bunch of them, so he's doing a good job, though, of, of managing his emotions. And he's done a great job since late last season, roughly of controlling those emotions. It's hard. They say he went, so advantage Duffy at one and two, and with one strike on both. Corners had moved back. So this will give Moose and Hosmer a little bit range. How about fire one right down the line and have Moose backhand it near the bag? Tried the off speed pitch up and away. Two balls, two strikes. Right now, his best command is with that fastball. And you yeah. need the off speed pitch. Yeah, but you know, he's he can spot that fastball and be effective with that pitch, especially if he can you know, change speeds on it. 90 to 96. He can, he can use that pitch only. But when he gets two strikes early, he wants to go ahead and just finish him off if he can. Foul. Gerard Dyson, he, he's hungry for another ball down the line. And Reyes tried to hit a double, get a double on him. Watch how quickly Dyson makes up the speed here. Watch it. Getting to the ball is if just as important as having a strong arm. And he frees it right there. Look at how quickly he got to it and then got set to fire. Good base to throw off of. Danny with a good pitch to get him to pop up. Kane in center field will make the catch and no advance. So lots of times it's how much ground and how much time you make up getting to the ball. Dyson was going full out for this. So he got to it so quickly that helped him. And had he not made as accurate a throw by by making up that time with his speed to the ball. He would have gotten him with a bad throw. That's one heck of a play. The third straight game that Gerard Dyson has made a great play. Three assists in three days. Now Kevin Pillar. He goes after the first pitch. Pops it up. Hosmer there. Two out. So Duffy has allowed base runners in all four innings. But he hasn't hurt himself yet. No, and he's coming in there. Look at that 94. Right? You know, it's a good spot. It's upper. It jammed him. He's he's got a nice fastball and just having a little bit of command issues, but nothing has crossed the plate. Duff. Yeah.
Strike one. Well, that was a nice breaking ball that dropped right in there on Devin Travis. He's the young man they acquired from the Detroit Tigers in the Anthony Goes trade. And Travis had a brilliant start in April, hitting 325 with six home runs. Cooled off the last two months and then heated up the last two weeks. So he has his batting average back up to near 300. Right now, currently at 294. But he was a really good hitter in the minor leagues, a career 323 average, and that's why. Toronto needed a second baseman interested in young Travis. And he's been pretty much starting every every game. One and two. No, oh, this this kid Devon Travis, he's got a nice future ahead of him. He's got good hands, a good arm. He's got a little pop in his bat too. If you look at him size wise you're thinking wow he's not very big physically so he must not be able to have any pop. Well there's some outfielders this year that have gone on his size and played him shallow and he's hit it over their heads. You know Tigers had Ian Kinsler and Kinsler wasn't going anywhere so th this young kid was. Trade bait. Javon Travis. Devin. Maybe it's Devin. My bad. Sorry, Devin. Two on, two out. Duffy's 1 2. Upstairs with the off speed. Boy, he'll throw one good slider and then one bad one, mad at himself, and goes back and grabs that rosin bag to give himself a better grip. He has release points, not, not as consistent as he'd like. But he, he still needs to use it, continue to use it. He's just missing barely. That's why Dave last year wanted him to back off his velocity to calm down and he's had problems repeating his delivery and his arm slot. But Island always said you know he is an emotional guy we want him to pitch with that kind of passion but he really thought if he backed off to 92 93 94 he wouldn't have that fire he'd calm down. Ground ball short Escobar to second and once again the Royals out of trouble.
online with rapid pickup at delivery.venerabread.com. By Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Dodge, find your summer of performance with great deals at the Dodge Summer Clearance Event. Fun at the Little K. And fun at the Big K as well. To us, you're all all-stars. And they certainly are, but the Royals sending seven to Cincinnati. And I know there have been some complaints around the nation about the Royals stuffing the battle box. I think it's great. Yeah, too bad for them. Yeah. They haven't experienced 29 years of no playoffs. And when this team went to the top of the mountain last year, they captured a whole new generation here in Kansas City and new fans across the country. And they're still there. So Salvador Perez pops it up to the second baseman and Travis will make the catch for out number one. The Royals for the city, the Royals nation. We're talking the entire heartland of all those states we were talking about earlier, whether it's Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas. They just fell in love with the team and they've responded with great support. I'm told you're averaging 33,000 fans per game and then you have the fact that they had the tremendous success last year that amazing wild card victory over Oakland the run through the playoffs and right down to the final out of game seven of the World Series before falling to the Giants. They fell to Baumgartner. Yeah. They didn't fall to the Giants. The Royals were a better baseball team in my opinion than the Giants. Now let's don't be bitter. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I exploded. Oh. Just gives them something to look forward to this year with the team. 17 games over 500. Fonte was thrown out in a slow roller to third and Josh Dam Donaldson's only play was first base. It allowed Salvador Perez to move to second base and then Alex Rios smashed one in the gap left center field for a two base hit and gave the Royals the only run of the game. And there's a line drive caught by Travis. Man, he had hops on that one. Got to be an athlete to play in that middle of uh, that infield in the major leagues. And look at this. He really timed it perfectly. He's able to get up to the backhand side. Had a chance and had time. And oh, that's pretty sweet there. Nice athleticism. Yeah, he can dunk. Two right field. Long run for Batista. And it's going to drop. And Alex Rios has another two hit game. That's his sixth multi hit game in his last 10 and that's why Ned Yost reminding the media that hey he went through a stretch where he missed seven weeks of baseball then got back into activities which was really his spring training and now perhaps we're seeing him getting his timing down. No, nice to see him smiling on the field. I'd like to see him running. How about it. Two outs. Good base stealer. Five for five this year. Boy, he got a great jump. No chance. Alex Rios absolutely had a huge jump. And Estrada gave his catcher no chance to get Alex. Yeah, Estrada, he he has he's a little, little funky with his leg kick. It's very slow when he brings it up. And then he'll slide step with it at times. So he's not able to get Rios and Rios was off like you mentioned. That was the 250th career stolen base by Alex Rios and obviously Toronto saw a lot of them when he was their outfielder playing center and right for the Blue Jays. Pick him up. See if Gerard can, can get the job done here. 
Three balls and no strikes. And then you've got Escobar next. Marco can work deep in games. He set career highs in pitches over two consecutive starts on June 19th and 24th, totaling 247 pitches, almost 125 per game. So he can work deep, but he walks Dyson on four pitches. That's his first base on balls. And that's not a good sign because Escobar has been one of the Royals' best with runners in scoring position this year, hitting over 350. And fans, if you're on the road traveling and you want to watch your Royals, how about subscribing to MLB.TV Premium for live or on demand on over 400 devices, real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and more? Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Good speed on. Ball one to Escobar. Fly it out his first time up on the first pitch and then with two out and a runner at third tried to bunt his last time up and Donaldson bare hand threw him out by a step. Wasn't a bad effort by Esky and a great idea. It's just a. A great bare hand play by Donaldson who got more votes than any other player. For the all star game. Yeah all of Canada was pushing for Donaldson. Well, he's a heck of a baseball player sure is having a heck of a season both offensively and defensively started a night with 21 home runs and 60 RBIs. Royals got the Blue Jays where they want them two outs whenever they get two outs the the Royals hitters eyes light up and they say all right it's our time to hit. There it is. Two outs and runners in scoring position 297 by far the best and the American League average is only 230 so the Royals 67 points above the league average backbreakers. Good pitch on a breaking ball outside corner and Escobar down in the count one ball two strikes. That's what that does two outs they break the opponents back. Esky's kicking himself and saying man that was a good pitch to hit to right. I don't know what I was thinking. It happens when that ball is traveling up there at that type of velocity. If you don't if you don't say in your mind right away I'm, I'm, I'm swinging here it's too late sometimes. Two and two. Estrada had back to back games where he took no hitters into the eighth inning. First time that's been done in consecutive starts since Dave Steed did it. Back in 1988. Two straight starts in September that year. Escobar. Base hit. Here comes Rios. Royals take a 2 0 lead. And Escobar continues to shine with runners in scoring position. With two outs. Unbelievable. Some more two out lightning. Fantastic job there looking for his pitch waited him out another quality at bat. He fought it off the ball was in on his hands. Pitch was elevated if it's down low he probably hits it at somebody but. Escobar taking advantage of a mistake. Runners first and third with two out. The newest Royals selected to go to the All Star game, Mike Moustakis, elected by the fans. And uh, 
Dave Holtzman, who's our associate producer, he showed me an interesting map of the United States of where the votes came from, and it was throughout the Midwest. I mean, obviously dominated by the states we mentioned surrounding Kansas City, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, Oklahoma, all voting for Moose. That ball hit in the air, left side, playable for Valencia, going back Reyes, and Reyes will make the catch, and that will end the fourth inning. But the Royals score one more on a two-out base hit by Escobar and take a 2-0 lead over the Blue Jays. Young 22 year old made his major league debut filling in for Mike Moustakis said the highlight for him was his first major league hit also had his first major league triple first major league RBI he said he felt like everyone back in Nicaragua was watching including his family his parents his sister on Corn Islands Nebraska but before he heads back to Omaha told me he's heading out in the morning to Cincinnati so he gets to go play in the futures game it's never easy to go back to the minors but he knew he was up temporarily but he will join young Raul Mondesi and Balbino Fuenmayor, who had two home runs tonight. He has been a home run hitting machine this year in the minors for the Royals. All three of them heading to the Futures game. As for Chesler, guys, he said that he will be trying to work that much harder, having gotten a taste of the big leagues, loved every bit of it, very motivated to come back. Yeah, he had a smile on his face every second he was in the big leagues and the joy he brought to the team and they won all the games. So he's got a nice future, just 22 years of age. And there's a strike and Danny Duffy back in the count. Yeah, you know what? It's nice to see that that fresh young smile told himself it might take me five or six years to get to the big leagues and he was right. Lorenzo Kane takes care of Jose Reyes. And there's one down in the fifth inning with the Royals leading two nothing. That Flynn Meyer is really an interesting story because he was in independent ball but he was actually a prospect at one time before having to move to independent ball and found success there. And then signed with the Royals in the offseason was off the charts at double A promoted to triple A and is doing the same great things there. But he is mainly a first baseman. So that kind of stalls things with Haas at first base. Josh Donaldson 0 for 2. He is grounded out and lined out. This guy plays with reckless abandon. High in the air, center field, Kane. And on defense, you know what? He's got a lot of Alex Gordon in him. 
take a look at the sample size of this young man. Do you think he cares about his body? It reminded us of Alex Gordon in Chicago. Sure did. Now, this was really cool. See, <laughs> Alex just hurled his body, knocked the fan flat with a... He just knocked him on his backside, that White Sox fan. He didn't know what hit him. It was the coordinator. <laughs> And I loved his comment afterwards. He said, oh, what the heck? I'll, I'll go for it. He got close. And, <laughs> oh, what the heck? <laughs> oh, it's just, it, it, it's exciting. Duffy looking for his first one, two, three inning. Bautista, he wasn't sure about that when that ball was probably two inches away from his hands. His Duffy board a fastball in there. We told you of the strength of Toronto. It's their offense. But they just lost three or four games to the Chicago White Sox and only scored 10 runs total in those four games. Batista to center field. And Lorenzo Kane will tie a major league record with three putouts. In one inning. Held by thousands. Yes, indeed. Red Ford for the best deals on new Ford cars and trucks. Visit thoroughbredford.com. Steve Fiziak, Rex Sutler, Joel Goldberg with you at Kauffman Stadium. Royals lead it 2 nothing. They scored a run in the second inning on an RBI double by Alex Rios. And then Rios singled, stole second in the fourth and scored an Escobar single. So 2 nothing KC. Lorenzo Kane will lead things off. He's one for two. Strike one. Lorenzo sat out two days earlier this week. To rest his hamstring and sends that one into the seats foul. That's done a good job of, of resting his players. This week is important because his guys and his coaching staff are not going to get a mental or physical break. Over the next week. And so you it is a lot of energy, emotion, exhausting time at the All Star game. Oh, there's no question. There's just one distraction after another. And for Ned and, and his staff, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, preparation work. And Ned talked about it today before the game. He talked about the two hour meetings that they have to have every day. 
on the All-Star game. I mean, that, that takes you away from your focus of your team. However, he's got enough to cover his team. Batista will make the catch of Lorenzo Cain's fly ball to right. So there's one down here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And as you talked about, they spent two hours mapping out the pitching and putting together the lineup to make sure the reserves would get in. And he said, hey, we're going to be facing guys like Max Scherzer and Zach Greinke and Garrett Cole. So because I want to line guys up right. And there were a lot of discussions and obviously he has his coaching staff come early and they'll spend time on the all star game and then time on their Kansas City team. Well, you know, look what's at stake home field advantage for the World Series. Hosmer is two for two. And belts one high and deep Batista going back. It's off the top of the wall. Hosmer races to second has himself three hits in the night and his second double in as many games. Stay hot. And that's a, a very nice compact stroke. Got a little bit too much of the top half of the ball because it stayed in the yard or else that would have been out of here if he gets underneath that a quarter of an inch. That's way out. Good stroke. Hey, nice little compact stroke. But what he's doing is he's really controlling the foot. I talked about it. the foot is good. The balance is perfect. He's able to get the bat head out in front and send it off the wall. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hole in the base of that wall. And that ball came off of that off of his bat at 105. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then Estrada backs off Morales. One ball, no strikes. Boy, that's good to see as Haas has upped his batting average seven points from 283 to 290. Balls, no strikes. Estrada right now at 75 pitches. We told you he had back to back games where he threw 247. In the air, left side, backing up Valencia. He'll make the catch. Hosmer tags. He'll go to third. And Kansas City has Eric at third base with two out now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's celebrating her fifth anniversary, but will reconsider for Eric Hosmer. <laughs> well, uh, pretty impressive. Church just said, hey, did you see that sign over there? <laughs> Salvador Perez is one for two. How to play. Estrada starts him off with a fastball. He did that earlier with a fastball and then worked him away with off speed pitches and eventually got him to pop up to second base. That was his second time up. Belted his 14th home run in the fifth inning in yesterday's 8 to 3 win. And Estrada wants the signs again. Salvi, soft fly ball to center field, and out goes the second baseman, Travis, to make the catch. The Royals leave Hosmer at third. And we head to the sixth inning of play. Kansas City leading Toronto 2-0. To
these are available for purchase each game exclusively through the MLB.com ballpark app. Play catch in the outfield, take in summer fireworks on the field, and many more exciting experiences are available. Simply download the ballpark app, pick upgrades, and select a once in a lifetime experience you'll cherish forever. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors starters comparison Estrada going five, giving up two. Danny Duffy really working out of trouble the first four innings. He had runners on base innings one through four and then was able to get them one two three in the fifth and now will work Encarnacion Valencia and Martin in the sixth. See if Danny can get ahead now he, it hasn't the Blue Jays have not heard him when he's fallen behind. They had just three walks and that's okay but he's done a good job of getting back in counts and finishing guys off. Oh, and then he came too far in on Edwin and hits him. Yep, looks like it got him right on that elbow pad. Tough game. You can sometimes hear hitters yell before it hits. Oh. <laughs> it, it tries to. It takes away a little bit of the, uh, the pain that, that you know is coming. You're right. I've heard that before. And here is Danny Valencia, who is 0 for 1 with a walk. Walk to lead off the fourth, and then Martin single. But the next three batters, Navarro, flied out. Pilar. Pop to uh, the first baseman Hosmer and Travis grounded out. Put him in the lane. A six, a four, and a three double play. Roll him up. Beautiful job. Danny Duffy. What can you say? The Royals haven't exactly torched Estrada, but they've got a 2 nothing lead, and Duffy's doing every bit to hold it. He's only giving up four hits. He's got a good fastball tonight. Yeah, he's really been able to locate that pitch the mm -hmm. best. Russell Martin singled his last time up. We told you he had been through a really rough stretch. Four for his previous 42, but he's walked and singled in this game. Most of his home runs have come at home. And this team has hit 113 home runs. That's 49 more than Kansas City. The Royals with a great defense and the spacious outfield and three guys who can really run. There's a good breaking ball in there. One and two. The Royals are number one in all of baseball and defensive run saved at plus 43. Toronto is 21st of the 30 teams. They're minus five. That's not good. Ryan Madsen. He's ready to go as Duffy right now at 93 pitches trying to finish the sixth. Two balls and two strikes. Ed Yost and Dave Island have to really be encouraged. The way Danny has competed in this game. Pitched out of jams. Popped up. Hosmer should take it and will. And Danny Duffy goes six shutout innings.
Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Salvador Perez, he's saying, you know what? birthday and he has his birthday wishes he checked them off Dyson speed do at the play down the line uh, Escobar turn two um, and there was the other one and also his ninth birthday so he had the three checkoffs but he wants some more and here's the DraftKings Escobar Escobar one for three tonight Victor Martinez went deep in a loss Alex Rodriguez two for four and Noah Syndergaard pretty sharp tonight giving up one run in eight innings Detroit ended up losing that game. They were leading six to one in the ninth inning. Wow. And the Twins scored seven runs in the ninth, highlighted by Brian Dozier's three-run walk-off home run. Oh, man. That's his second walk-off home run this week. Mm. Omar Infante, the batter, to lead things off. The Royals with a two-nothing lead. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning, and of course the sixth is our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Barbara Collins from Independence. The Royals hit a home run in this inning. Barbara gets $200. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Barbara will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. Infante is grounded out and lined out. Travis made that exceptional high leaping catch last time Omar was up. This time it's popped up shallow right center field and Pilar wants it and will take it for out number one. The Royals have multi hit games from Eric Hosmer who's three for three and Alex Rios who's two for two. His double drove in a run his single. Then stolen base. He scored on the single by Alcides Escobar. And that is the scoring for Kansas City. So Rios has been involved in both. Backed him off with a curveball. Was not a fastball. Well, Alex had our dodge drive of the game back in the second inning, squaring this up perfectly. Sure did. Can't blame that it on Rios. Strong. This guy's starting to hit that ball, man, and, and it's good to see. Knocked in Salvador Perez. Stay hot. Start finding them gaps, and get productive again, like like they know you can. That's why he keep they keep keeping him in there. Did you see that movie? 
blame it on Rio? Yeah. That's a about 20 years ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm old. What do you want? Come on. Here is the 2 1 pitch, and Alex takes low 3 and 1. Rios is a swinger. He has only walked three times this year. And he's swinging at that one and pops it up. Foul territory. Encarnacion will make the catch and two out. So here is Gerard Dyson who struck out his first time up walked his second at bat and was left stranded at third base. Bunt. Estrada. Safe. As soon as Estrada bobbled, you knew he had very little chance, and Dyson is given a base hit. That's all you got to do with that kind of speed, and, and you don't have to be perfect with the bunt. It puts pressure on both the pitcher and the whoever fields it to be perfect. And they're being asked to check it, as there will be a challenge from John Gibbons. The ball has to hit the glove. Clear and convincing are the two key words here. It has to be clear and convincing to over overturn the call on the field. Quite frankly, Encarnacion did not stretch that much. And I think if it's Eric Hosmer at first base, it is a sure out the way Eric always helps out his fielders by stretching towards the throw. Mm. Doesn't leave the runner very much room, does it? When your first baseman's standing right there on that bag like that. They are calling Dyson out. So he is gone. And so are the Royals in the sixth inning.
Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper and cheeseburger today only at Jack in the Box. By your Midwest Ford dealers, visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. And the Rex Hudler, Bill Goldberg with you at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. The Royals with two runs on eight hits. The Blue Jays, no runs on four hits. And we will see the first chapter of what possibly could be HDH with Herrera going the seventh, Davis going the eighth, and Greg Holland going the ninth. Well, we you hope, see. we hope it lines up that way because when those three guys have been in the game this year, the Royals are 10 and 0. As expected. And Herrera named to his first All Star game earlier this week, and he was absolutely stunned. Everyone, I think, in baseball expected Wade Davis to be selected, but Nedio said he wanted Kelvin Herrera. The young man was delighted. And he has been sensational this year with an ERA that is down near two. Herrera at 2.08. This is his 38th game. So Duffy goes six, six shutout innings against the team that led all of baseball in scoring at 5.3 runs per game. And Herrera gets a fly out. To Gerard Dyson and Navarro is out number one. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag KC Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Seen some great signs in the stands today, including that young man who is celebrating his ninth birthday. He saw what Dyson's speed do. He saw Escobar turn two. And he saw Duffy go six shutout. I don't know if he had that on his sheet. This big board posted up of what he wanted to see tonight. Well, oh, he wanted to see Salvi throw somebody out. He hasn't seen that yet. Yeah, you're talking about that fan in, in, yes. in the beautiful uh, ninth birthday. Yeah, I liked it. Maybe we could make, get him to hold it up again so we can read it. I didn't, wasn't able to catch all that. But you know, Danny Duffy, great job. I mean, he he was really exercising his fastball. He was working it. Has had had a little bit of command issues with his with his breaking ball and his changeup, but look, just walking three, no big deal. Heck, nobody crossed the plate. If this, unless there's any damage done, heck, there's no there's no way to say that he did not have a good outing. He he was he was solid. He looks good. We've seen him win with mainly his fastball. I remember last year a, a game against the St. Louis Cardinals where he threw six shutout innings, and his fastball command on both sides of the plate and down was as good as I've ever seen it. And the Cardinals couldn't touch him. And right now Herrera can't be touched by Kevin Pilar as Colleen strikes him out. And our sprint cuts of the game are all about Danny Duffy tonight. Confident. Had good mound presence. Good body language. And the main thing, good pitches. Good defense, too. Forgot that, sorry. Only one strikeout his last two starts and 12 and a third innings. He's pitching to contact. Mm -hmm. He's able to stay within himself. That's what Ned Yost was talking about before the ball game when. Mm -hmm. He was asked about that and he said, hey, he's throwing strikes. With our defense, why not? Travis is 0 for 2. Grounding out twice to short.
Two balls and a strike. Young man out of Florida State. Blue Jays trying to solve that second base question mark issue. Meiser as tourist was set to be their everyday second baseman, but he was injured and has not played this year. That's a gapper. Kane racing for it. Kane won't reach it, and it is past him to the wall, and Travis might have three. He's, he's stopping at second base as the ball rolls away, uh, and it went past Escobar, and that likely will be a, an error for Kane. Yeah, it's too bad. Fortunately. Yeah, too bad, because he had him stopped at second base, and, and Lorenzo, Lorenzo Kane just, a throw got away from him, and he missed Escobar, the cutoff man, and then the runner... Travis started up again. So a double and an error on the Royals center fielder. And with two out, Kansas City will now face Jose Reyes batting from the left side. Reyes singled in the third but was thrown out trying to advance to second base by Dyson. Oh. Stock is in at third. Well, you know, you talked about that. We talked about his power that, that, that Travis has, and he just showed it right there. A good quick swing on a hard fastball like Herrera generates some pretty good bat speed and, and some pretty good exit speed by the baseball. Two and oh. Reyes, it's hard to believe he's only 31 years of age because it's, he's been around a long time. He had some great years with the New York Mets. 3 and 0. Oh. You know what? It's 11:20. He stayed up as long as he could. 2 hour and 7 minute rain delay. Wore his baseball uniform. He's got his socks looking good. Rarey gets back in the count at three and one. Royals with a two nothing lead. Rios knocking in a run in the second inning and then scoring the second run on an Escobar base hit in the fourth. Three and two. Came after him at 98 miles an hour. Go right up, but it's explosive. Challenge him, and you know, and when you have that type of pitch, that type of power, you can use it. Herrera closed out the Royals' victory last night, eight to three, with a one-two-three ninth. Out of play. He has been one of the better hitters for the Jays with runners in scoring position this year, hitting 316. Levine trying to finish him off. Escobar, he knows he has to hustle and does. Defense. Great bullpen to win. The river getting the job done with some help from his friends.
Remember Torrey Hunter last time the Royals were up in Minnesota, just lost it, got ejected, tossed his clothes. Well, his former team, the Tigers, were in Minnesota today. Look at Anibal Sanchez and David Price. They're doing the Torrey Hunter imitation. Torrey's in the box right now. Well, they even took it a step further, and Torrey is just rolling on the ground, absolutely laughing. But the Twins would have the last lap, and we will show you that in just a moment because we told you before that Minnesota was trailing in this one big. Brian Dozier has the walk-off. That's the guy that Mike Moustakis beat out. But Dozier's had a good week. Guys, absolute disaster for Detroit. Verlander went seven and two-thirds and gave up a run. Bruce Rondon comes in, gives up three runs. Joaquin Soria gives up four runs. They were absolutely blowing the Twins out. And in the end, they storm back and the Minnesota Twins win it. Alcides Escobar with another hit. He's got a couple of knocks in the game. We'll be talking about that. This offense, Danny Duffy not allowing a run and much more on Boulevard Royals Live. Plus here from Ned Yost, player reaction. And we'll also be getting you ready for tomorrow's matchup here at Kauffman Stadium, guys. And Joel, if the Royals hold on and win this game, they'll have now an eight-game lead on the defending American League Central champion Tigers. That's impressive. Now, Minnesota, they have had some marvelous wins lately, and they said when they left Kauffman Stadium, they should have won three or four or all four against Kansas City. But KC walked them off twice. Moustakis over three in his return from Southern California, where he was on family emergency leave. Twice he's flied out to left field. Oh and one. He's had success. Estrada off of Moustakis with the changeup. with the fastball. It looks like he'll cut his fastball a little bit. Yeah, he does. He cuts it into lefties and works up it away to righties. Adds and subtracts velocity. You know, a tough pitcher. He's a he's a guy who, who really I talk, talked about feeds off of aggressive hitters. And the Royals, they have been patient. They've been, you know, Able to wait him out and get his pitch, get their pitches. Nine hits again by the Royals. One away from double digits. Yeah, he's been on a great run lately. Great tempo, great rhythm. Last seven starts coming into tonight's play. Five and one record, a 3 2 9 ERA. But he's also received 40 runs of support in those seven starts. None tonight. Duffy was terrific. Herrera with a shutout, seven. And there's a shot to right field, but right at Batista. And so Escobar has to retrace his steps. Can't do much about that. Moose squared that ball up. Kane reached on an infield hit his first time up fly out to center field and right field next two times. And that time it was a slide step home so Escobar was not able to get a good read there have been times where Estrada will lift that lead leg a little higher giving base stealers a little more time to go. Rios ripped him off quite easily back in inning number four. And that would have been a good pitch to go on and still a running count at two balls no strikes.
3 0 count to Kane. And Estrada might be laboring as he's nearing the 100 pitch mark. His last outing, he threw 101 pitches in only five innings. And the start prior to that, threw 129 pitches in a victory over Tampa Bay where he took a no hitter into, into the eighth inning. His, oh, Kane yeah. had a swing and almost came out of his shoes on that rip. Estrada's night very easily could have been over after just seven pitches. Escobar hit him in the shin. And there was, you know, he was, was Hosmer. Oh, I mean Hosmer, yeah. As Hosmer hit him right in the shin. And he threw probably four or five different warm-up pitches to see if he could get his feel back in his foot. There he is. Next pitch is the hunters. Again on the hands of Lorenzo Kane fouls it off three and two. And he has competed well and really hasn't been taxed that much with the exception of that second inning when he gave up a run on a single by Salvi the ground out by Infante and then Rios is ripping to the left center gap that plated Perez. Escobar goes the pitch is swung on hit in the air playable for Pilar and Escobar will run back to first base two out. Well with Eric Hosmer coming up that brings our. Oh it looks like we are going to have a pitching change here as Estrada will be taken out with Hosmer three for three off of him. And I think that John Gibbons wants the left hander to face Haas. So our Chevy call to the bullpen. With three hits, one he smashed off the pitcher Estrada back in the first inning. Then he roped one to right, and then doubled to right. That one almost got out. Hit high off the fence of the Toronto bullpen, and now the lefty Aaron Loop to face Eric. Strike one. Loop's funky. He got that sidearm action from. The left side cuts that fastball 87 to 93 slider and a changeup. The bullpen not nearly as strong as Kansas City's and you can see loop with a 501 ERA and he's not pitched that well lately. 
He's usually called on to get left handers out but this year left he's hitting 271 and he's given up seven earned runs over his last six and two thirds innings with opponents batting 387 off of him. He and Brett Cecil are their two lefties in that pen. Oz takes a breaking ball low. Loop not only is deceptive with that sidearm angle, but watch his right foot, how he shakes it. He'll kick it. He'll kick it out right before he delivers the ball home. And that can be a distracting thing for a hitter when he's trying to look for that release point from the sidearm angle. Watch how he kicks that leg. Yep. Osmer, good swing there at 94. Osmer hitting 256 off lefty so far this year. Okay, he brings his knee up and then watch him kick that foot back, back down. See how he brings it back and then out. A chopper taken by Donaldson who tried to barehand, then he had no chance. An error on Donaldson. Hmm. Yeah, he had, uh, he did not have to barehand that, I don't think. Now, let's see how Haas, Haas is getting down that line pretty well, running hard. And I think Donaldson tried to rush it a little bit. He could have probably used his glove. That's what I was going to ask you, Rex. Did he have time to use his glove? Absolutely. But he looked at Loop right away and he patted his chest and pointed at himself saying, my bad, sorry. Now Morales, who three times has flied out tonight, once to center, once to right, once to left. So he's been very democratic. Well, it's time for some insurance runs here. Because if these Blue Jays team, we talk about their power. They can get right back in the with one swing of the bat. Morales, fifth in the American League in RBIs with 57. Mark Teixeira leads the AL, coming into the day with 62, and Donaldson of Toronto with 60, and his teammate Batista right behind him with 59. You have the right-hander Salvador Perez waiting on deck. Morales with 31 two-out RBIs, that's second most in the American League. Just outside, three and zero, oh, and I think Ned will give this smart veteran the green light. Why not? It's up to his liking. If not, Salvi's on deck. Oh. Takes a strike. Right handed hitting 311, but most of the power has come from the left side, but he, quite frankly, has more at bats from that left side, facing more right handed pitchers. Escobar second, Hosmer first. That will get out of play. We started at night at 9.17. Two hour and seven minute rain delay. Royals scored a run in the second, one in the fourth. They have a two-nothing lead. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Strike three called, and I think 
Kendris thought it was ball four and started to walk towards first base until Adrian Johnson pulled him out. Here comes Wade Davis. Davis has been one of the best pitchers in baseball this year. A brilliant 0.24 ERA. He's received some very good defense. He will tell you that, but he's heading to Cincinnati with his teammate Herrera, who worked a shutout in seventh inning, and Arquia in the driver's seat. Check these numbers out and where he ranks in Major League Baseball relievers. Yep, very quality work. I mean, I mean, like. Exemplary work. Did I say that word right? Yes, you did. That's, and that's a lot of my vocabulary there, but I, it, it was needed. Never for Wade call Davis. attention to yourself in that way, Hud. <laughs> it's okay. Wade you got Davis. skills. Yeah, Wade Davis is just getting it done. That's all there is to it. Great arsenal of, of pitches. 90 to 97 velocity. Cuts that ball. And, you know, throw a nice little cutter and an overhand curve. He does have his work cut out for him. It's Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion. And combined, they have hit over, well, almost 80 home runs. Donaldson has belted 21 this year. He'll start for the American League in the All-Star game next week. Pitch is low. One ball, one strike. Donaldson grounded out, lined out, flied out. In there. One and two. One for five, a couple of strikeouts. Josh Donaldson versus Wade Davis. And then there's that breaking ball that broke too early, and it's now an even count at two balls and two strikes. Davis facing the toughest three Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion. He struck him out. I wasn't sure if he fouled the ball, but he did not, and that is out number one in the eighth inning. Well, on Tuesday night, Donaldson and Wade Davis will be teammates, and won't Donaldson be happy he doesn't have to face Wade Davis in that game? And 
time Rex we've just been told that the official scorekeeper here in Kansas City just changed the uh, ruling on the Eric Hosmer chopper to the third baseman Donaldson who barehanded they changed it from an error to a base hit so Haas now four for four. That's good. Good for him. Uh -huh. good, good for Donaldson. It's his first four hit game this year. He had three absolutely scalding base hits and then the chopper on the infield. And the count is two and one on Batiste, who has a very good eye. He's walked more than any other American League player with 66. He walked earlier tonight in the first inning. There's a breaking ball that dips down low, three and one. He's to such a powerful hitter. He's walked single flied out to center field tonight. Right down the middle. I mean he went right down Broadway on that 97 mile an hour fastball. So way back in the count. Has some room to work with with a two run lead. I prefer not to put him on with another power hitter coming up and Carnacion. Down the left field line. Dyson gets there. Batista races to second and will make it with a one out double. Don't see a lot of extra base hits off of Wade Davis, but occasionally he is only human. He'll leave a pitch out over the middle of the plate, and a, uh, an excellent hitter like Bautista can do that. So now the tying run comes up, and Encarnacion, who has blasted 17 home runs this year, is 0 for 2 tonight. Wade Davis has given up seven extra base hits this year. Well, he was trying to tie up the game on one swing, and he whipped at that 97 mile an hour fastball. Opponents only batting 148 off of the Royals' right hander. One ball, one strike. With runners in scoring position, opponents only batting 133 off of Davis. Not good for Encarnacion. And most of those probably were when he was a starter. Or a lot of them. Again, he goes dead red and has the advantage at one ball and two strikes. 98 miles an hour on the fastball. Justin Smoke is going to the on deck circle. He will hit for Danny Valencia. Wade says yes to the sign. outside he put it exactly where Sal had placed his glove yeah, it's off the grid and looked like a ball Adrian Johnson home plate umpire doing a nice job whenever you don't hear us use his name and umpires like that they don't want us to say their name consistent And he's loud enough so everyone can hear that time sign and signal. You usually hear him yell that? That's good. Pitchers, 
infielders, everybody hears it. Dyson makes the catch and two are out and Batista stays put at second base. So now Davis will face the left handed batting just in smoke. Ninety seven messed up his timing it's off the end of the bat. He knew it. But I'll tell you what this guy you know they're dangerous and, and one swing of the bat he could have tied that up there so Wade Davis doing a nice job. We know Wade hasn't given up a home run in, in what the last two years. And Justin Smoke has terrific power. We saw him hit a home run. I think it was last week. In Toronto that went 475 feet and he's a switch hitter. He'll be batting from the left side against Wade Davis. He was batting from the right side and almost went fifth deck in Toronto. He's six for 16 off of John Gibbons bench as a pinch hitter this year. That's good. It is. And all of those hits have come from the left side. Strike one. Well he'll likely get the start at first base tomorrow when a Royal right hander is in the mound and Chris Young. Mark Burley is going for Toronto. One ball, one strike. Reed last pitched on Tuesday, pitched the eighth inning. The Royals leading five to four. Now advantage Davis at one and two. That late life there to that cutter that really can just mess up hitters. I'll tell you that. Watch this. See how he puts a little bit of spin on that ball. That's that cut. Oh, man, that's beauty. 93 mile an hour cut fastball. Yeah, there's a young man proud of his HDH T-shirt. Hit to the first baseman Hosmer. He'll come back to the bag, and the Royals continue to get the job done as they're shutting out the team that scored more runs in baseball than any other. The Toronto Blue Jays. Waiter, check please. us around the league and the White Sox posting back to back shutouts. They shut out the Blue Jays yesterday. Minnesota storms back. Detroit's bullpen gives up seven in the ninth as the Twins win it. Cleveland, Danny Salazar, eight and two thirds, allowing just one run. None of them earned. And Tampa Bay 
knocks off Houston 3-1. to Tomorrow's pitching matchup, a couple of veterans. Mark Burley has the second most wins of all time against the Royals. Only Burt Blylevin has more. They'll be going up against Chris Young. Get here quickly because last start for Mark Burley, one hour and 54 minutes. Thank you very much, Joel, and Ezekiel Carrera will play left field for the Jays now. And the new pitcher will be Ryan Tapera, a 6 1 right hander from Lake Jackson, Texas. Came out of Northwestern University. No, excuse me, Sam Houston. Cole Schultz is the young man from Northwestern. Salvador Perez to lead things off. He has a 1 1 count. Sal today has singled, scored a run, and popped up twice. He's got a 90 to 94 mile an hour sinking fastball slider, curveball. He's been used primarily as a long man this year by John Gibbons. And he's pitched quite well lately, currently riding a nine inning scoreless streak. And he was recalled from AAA on July 3rd. Two balls, two strikes. The Royals will play again against the Blue Jays in about another 13 hours. Well, doesn't matter how long you stay at the yard as long as your team wins. You got that right. Greg Holland will phase hitters six, seven, and eight in the ninth inning. That means Russell Martin, Deonor Navarro, and Kevin Pillar. Who do they have available? They have Goins and Calabello. That's all they have left after bringing in Carrera. Fouled off. So the count three and two on Salvi. And he's ready and blasts. One deep to left. The Royals have a three-nothing lead on Perez's 15th home run. Morales with a nice catch. Salvador Perez, he's getting used to that trot because he's been doing it with regularity. Three and two count. Looked like the fastball was there. Curls up like a rattlesnake and he uncoils. And that ball was not walking. Nice play by Morales. A quick strike. And a beauty. Little extra insurance for Holland. So the Royals with three runs on 11 hits. The Blue Jays no runs on six hits. The Blue Jays have gone 23 consecutive scoreless innings. Kansas City trying for their sixth straight win. And Fonte to right field. It will stay up though for Batista. And there's one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Here comes Alex Rios, who's two for three tonight. He's already tied a Royals record for a catcher. John Buck in 2007. Well, did 15 home runs before the All Star break. And Sal hit 17 last year, so he's well on pace to fly by that one pretty soon. Strike one. 
salving opportunity. I mean, the, this guy, the, the, the more he finds that swing and, and gets to know the pitching in the league that, that he's already been breaking, he has a chance for a 2025 home run season. He's got that kind of power. He's very special. Ned Yost was talking about that the other day that power is usually the last to come and uh, the young man is only 25 years of age but 17 last year. Well you make a mistake particularly with a fastball and he can crush it. Yeah. You know and, and he's going to continue to see him maybe not as often but it's because pitchers they're, they're competitors. Yeah he can hit the other guy's fastball but he can't hit mine. I'm going to throw it by him. You know. And, that's why he keeps getting. Them. He hit one in the upper deck at Target Field when we were in Minnesota in early June. Rios flips it foul. It stays one ball and two strikes. Good to see Alex picking things up. His sixth multi-hit game in his last ten. With the double and the single and the stolen base and RBI and a run scored tonight. Down low, two balls, two strikes. Again tomorrow afternoon, one o'clock game. Tickets available to watch Chris Young battle Mark Burley. And then on Sunday afternoon, Volquez against Felix Dubron. And then the All Star break. Rios to center field. Pilar there. Two outs. Has this season moved fast for you, Fizz? Season. Oh my gosh, the older you get, the faster they seem to move. But I think when you're winning, they just fly by so much. And we've had such joy broadcasting Royals baseball. And they're looking to move 18 games over 500 for the first time this year. Fantastic. Great stories to tell. This young man right here has a lot to do with it, too. Looking for a spark plug, looking for some somebody to step up while Alex Gordon's out and Gerard Dyson. Dyson has answered the call. Dyson 0 for 2 with a walk. And he almost hit Gerard in the right leg, but he was able to jump out of the way. Tonight he's on it again. Jose Reyes thought he could get a double. Dyson said, you know what? Not on my watch and not on my arm. Look at that. Got him by a 10 feet. He's got to go. A ball and two strikes now on Dyson. Obviously he'll be playing a lot more. Alex Gordon on the disabled list out with the left groin strain we were told eight weeks right now they just want it to calm down and let Alex begin his therapy in two to three weeks with Nick Kenny he's a confident baseball player Gerard Dyson well you have to have confidence when you come from where he has come from being drafted as far down Rolls one to second. Dyson is out. And so are the Royals, but Salvador Perez goes deep, belts his 15th home run of the year, and it's let's bring on Greg Holland. Wrap up win number 51. Hammer time.
comes out of the bullpen and he will face Russell Martin Deanna Navarro and Kevin Pillar. Holland this year with 17 saves 3 and 0 record 292 ERA and you see the two blown saves his Royals teammates picked him up and got the wins in both of those. Tight knit bunch of Royals baseball players. They're all close. They consider each other family. And they protect each other. Holland falling behind two balls and no strikes. Greg was pressed into duty on Wednesday with two on and one out of the ninth after Tampa Bay cut Casey's lead to nine to five. The inherited runner scored on Evan Longoria's single and the tying run was on second when Holly fan Grady Sizemore to close out the nine seven victory. Back in the count at two and two. Holland to go 90 to 95 with that fastball slider occasional split fingers. Out off. Craig staying with that slider. That's the one area I'm sure he would like to improve on for the second half is command. He has walked 14 and 24 and two thirds innings. Hasn't given up many hits only 15 stuff good. Like his, his stuff is, is great especially the, the break on his slider. It's not doesn't have a lot of lateral break to it that stays in the hitting zone longer. It goes straight down. So it, you know hitters they miss it. Almost like a split finger. Pitch. They either hit it if it's up or they miss it. Well, they missed it there. And a strikeout for Greg. Out number one in the ninth inning. Yep. See how it moves straight down? That's that, that's really tough for hitters. Especially coming off to, out of the fastball arm speed. And there you see him off balance. Now Navarro, who is one for three, singled his first time up and then flied out to center and left. All one high. Royals had four straight games where they scored at least seven runs against the Rays. But Toronto held them down tonight. Three runs on 11 hits. Oh. Danny Duffy did a splendid job working six shutout innings. And of course the HDH we're seeing again tonight. Herrera with a shutout seventh. Davis a shutout eighth. Holland trying to do the same to wrap up a Royal victory. Out off one and two. Minnesota won, so the Royals won't gain any ground on the Twins. But the Tigers lost to Minnesota on an incredible comeback by the Twins. And should the Royals hold on here, the Tigers will fall eight games back. How about that? Man, that is some kind of pitch, and he had him fishing. That stuff he's got is one of the reasons he's the best reliever over the last three seasons. That there's, there is. I mean, he's, isn't the numbers are incredible? They can back it up. When Jonathan Broxton got traded, they put Holland right in there, and that was a, another heck of a move by Dave Moore and Ned Yost. And you really got the feeling that. Ned Yost really felt that Greg Holland had the heart, the toughness to turn the page. When you blow a save, how do you handle it? 
And, and Greg just really one of those good old country boys from North Carolina who says, let's go. I'm going to bring my best stuff. You bring yours and let's see who wins. And well, seems like 99 times out of 100, Holland wins. That's whack foul. So Pilar on that one. But all it is is a strike. Yep. He says, let's play a little good old fashioned country hardball. He's all ears. Crowd picks up that familiar chance. Another foul ball, another strike, and Pilar saying, what do I have to do? And now, Holland with options in a one-two count. If he throws the same pitch he threw Russell Martin, he'll have no chance. win for the 51st time this year and HDH is 11 and 0 in games they pitch in the same game this year Holland strikes out the side great to have Moustakis back Eric Hosmer with a four hit game and Kansas City now a season high 18 games over 500 they find a way to win every night, especially in front of this home crowd that they love so much. And this crowd so patient tonight because they had to wait two hours and seven minutes through the rain before the Rose got that W. Greg Holland nails down his 18th save. Yep, they call him the hammer because he can hammer down. Believe me, those sliders. Woo, man, I'm so glad we're up here in the booth. Don't have to try to hit that, Biz. You'd have a, a better chance swinging a boat oar up there. Well, the last one he threw was a fastball. He strikes out the side, getting Martin and Navarro on the sliders and Pilar on a heater right down Broadway. Let's go to Joel. All right, guys, thank you very much. I'm joined right now by Eric Hosmer and Salvador Perez like brothers they're arguing of who's gonna go first Salvi says I go first I catch tomorrow si, senor, you know here you want this no Bobby okay oh, it's my job uh, you want me to get it you yeah not yet okay. Salvador Perez Eric Hosmer had to wait around a little bit for this one but in the end it is a win first off what did you like about Danny Duffy pretty good you know he you both signed to a play he aggressive tonight and he got a win for tonight. And for you, Haas, a four-hit night. Feels like that offense is really starting to click top to bottom again. What's changed? Uh, well, you know, we uh, came in with a good plan tonight. We, uh, you know, got some guys on early, made some things happen, and, uh, you know, Salvi with the big swing there at the end, add the insurance run for the bullpen. All right. Let's talk a little bit about this group and getting Mike Moustakis back, too. How much did that mean to both of you guys? Uh, it meant a lot, you know, anytime one of your teammates is out for a little while, you want to welcome him back with a win, and, you know, it's uh, it's big to have Moose back in the lineup. He's a big part of this team, and offensively and defensively, so it's good to see him back. Salvi, what do you look at? Oh, he just faked out Hosmer, the fake Gatorade bucket. You know, Butera was lingering back there. Drew was going to come out. Did you tell him no? No, I said yes. Come on. You know when I come out, brother. It's too late. It's too late. It's the morning. How about this? We still have a lot of fans here, and it is 12:15 in the morning. Salvi, what do you think about all those folks that have stayed around? The best fun and baseball. Thank you. And Haas, last thing, you got to turn around and get back here quickly, so we'll let you go. But when you wait around this late and you can get that extra W, how much sweeter is that? Yeah, we'll wait all night for a W, just like these fans. Great job, Eric Hosmer and Salvador Perez. He did it again to him. See, Salvi, guys, he always strikes. There's no Gatorade. He still makes them think it's coming. You got to have a little bit of fun. You better believe it. All aboard. Who's driving the bus? Flip a coin.